Unlocking the mystery. It turns out cats really are liquid. Welcome to WowUQ Animation Channel. There is a video circulating on the internet of three cats locked in a glass room, and one cat is wondering about the gap between the two panes of glass, and then like a bug in the system, the white cat burrows its head through the gap and then slams into it. The cats next to the cat were dumbfounded what this guy was doing, and then they watched as the cat struggled. And then it went over to one of its front legs and continued to push, and it pulled its whole body out. When they looked back at their companions inside, not only the humans, but even their feline counterparts couldn't believe it was real, and this guy had gotten out. It turns out that cats are really liquid octopus can pass through as long as its mouth can pass through its body while cats can pass through as long as its whiskers can pass through its body. For instance, this little kitten ignores all hindrances and pushes past his companion's blockade. He sticks his head out, pulls his body back, then lands smoothly with a buffer and it's even cooler than an octopus jailbreak. Apart from videos and images, scientists have actually proven that cats are liquid. It's truly miraculous. Why do cats possess this ability to turn into liquid? Today, let's talk about the story behind this. Going back to 2017 in Massachusetts Harvard University Hall where chaos loomed. It was the annual IG Nobel Prize award ceremony. Though absurd in selection, every research is valid science. For instance, in 2000, a winner named Andre Geim joked at Harvard about inventing a magnetic levitation device that lifted a frog successfully in his lab. This experiment seemed hilarious, but 10 years later, in 2010, Andre actually won a real Nobel Prize for developing graphene initially intended for his levitating frog experiment. Graphene has opened up doors for new materials such as graphene batteries. If mass-produced, your phone could charge in five minutes for three months of battery life. That's the IG Nobel Prize for you, first making you laugh, then making you ponder. Since 1991, IG Nobel Prizes have been awarded annually with each called the first. So, at the inaugural award ceremony in 2017, a lad named Dadden stepped forward. He won by proving using rheology principles that cats are liquid. How would one describe Newtonian studies? Probably like this. Scientists term these liquids capable of walking on water non-Newtonian fluids. They resemble water, but when stepped on they instantly become viscous and solid-like, while retreating returns them to liquid causing you to sink. Non-Newtonian fluids aren't rare. Ketchup is one classic example. The pool doesn't contain rare chemical substances, but rather familiar corn starch slurry we know so well from daily life. Syrup or chicken broth. Slightly viscous liquids classify as non-Newtonian fluids, too, while studying them falls under rheology. If someone's believed to be knowledgeable about Newtonian rheology, ask them pandare, pantery. These three words originate from their ancestor's motto conveying everything can flow. Their ancestor was Heraclitus. Later physics master Newton joined professing Pandare, unifying solids, liquids, gases into one mathematical model dubbed Pantare distortion theory stating everything can deform. For example, if you told your physics teacher Everest was fluid, he'd probably devour you whole, but if with glittering eyes he gazes rather than devour it means he empathizes with pantry followers mountain, Everest indeed counts as liquid according to them. This mathematical model known as dipolar number equals dig divided by t. Dig indicates time needed for an object to take shape retains form observed time determined by t and dipolar number determines whether an object is solid or liquid fundamentally. If dipolar number is less than 1 then it proves fluidity otherwise higher numbers indicate proximity towards non-Newtonian fluids and solids, so whether Everest happens to be liquid or not depends on your observation time. From the human time scale, T is only a few decades, while 2 is tens of millions of years. So the Debra number is very large and the Himalayas are obviously solid. But if we look at it from the Earth's time scale, T is billions of years, 
while two is only tens of millions of years, so the Debra number is less than one, and the Himalayas are obviously liquid. Of course, it is not a theoretical fantasy that the Himalayas are liquid. For example, from the evidence of continental drift, the Himalayas are indeed flowing, but our human, T, is too short to feel it. By the same token, this water ball can also be solid. Because from the scale of high-speed photography with tens of thousands of frames per second, it maintained a short solid form at the moment it was just punctured, but the time was too short for humans to perceive it, so we just ignored it. But in fact, it is the same as the Himalayas. On a certain time scale, both are solid and liquid. This is the worldview of rheology. After we have a preliminary understanding, we can continue to see how French physicist Fardin proved that cats are liquids. Fardin said that the reason for this study was that in 2014, an animal magazine listed 15 pieces of evidence that cats are liquids. These 15 pieces of evidence used cats of different breeds and various containers and ultimately proved that cats can change themselves into the shape of containers without obvious changes in volume, which is the basic property of liquids. This study attracted widespread attention at the time, especially the picture of the kitten curled up in the goblet. Many people criticized the magazine, saying that they abused animals and fixed the kittens in containers to feed them so that they grew into this horrible shape. But in fact, people who have really raised cats should have experienced that cats can really turn into liquids. For example, in this video of a cat going down the stairs, it is obvious that this is a liquid cat flowing down from the upstairs. Then, Faden used a video like this to illustrate. He said, pay attention. It takes about five seconds for the cat to liquefy and fill the entire fish tank, and we observe it for 60 seconds. So at this moment, the cat's bottom pull number is 5 sixtieths, which is less than one, and it is a liquid. Another example is this long-haired cat. Not only is the bottom pull number less than one, but its long hair expands rapidly and fills the entire container. Expansion is the characteristic of gas, so in this special case, the cat even shows the properties of gas. But if we extend the time scale, we will find that many times when the cat is running and jumping, its bottom pull number is greater than one, and it is solid. Therefore, this proves that cats can be liquid or solid, depending on the observer and the observation time. In addition, to fully prove that cats are liquids, we must take into account the second major characteristic of liquids, which is called principal axis. That is to say, liquid flow usually has a main direction, and flow in this main direction can be formed without a container. So Faden cited some photos, such as a cat spread out along the main axis in the sink, a cat spread out along the main axis between the ground and the cat cage, a cat stared at by its owner, stretched out along the main axis like a pizza, and even a cat drooping along the main axis on the clothesline. For another example, the fluidity of this liquid cat spread out in the non-main axis direction is only extended by two to three times, while the cat flowing on the main axis has an extension of five to six times. Obviously, this proves that the liquid cat has a main axis with better fluidity, so these main axis phenomena also further prove that cats are liquid properties. Continue to prove that liquids should also have affinity. For example, water and oil cannot mix and water and oil are in a dislike relationship, while water can spread quickly on a paper towel, so water is close to paper towels, but water cannot spread on lotus leaves, so water is dislike lotus leaves. What about the affinity of liquid cats? Faden showed a photo like this. He said that this bamboo basket is a super cat repellent surface. The liquid cat on the bamboo basket is nearly spherical, which is consistent with the state of water on lotus leaves. The lotus effect is because the rough lotus surface repels smooth water droplets, and Faden said that he found that the affinity of cats is because their rough cat hair repels smooth surfaces. For example, 
Faden showed an example of an extremely rough surface. This cat slept peacefully in the iron railing. At the same time, Faden also observed in the experiment that cats prefer to spread out on rough surfaces such as carpets, pillows, and keyboards, and if they encounter smooth tile surfaces, this extreme cat repellent situation will also occur. At this point, Faden explained another strange phenomenon that cat owners often encounter, that is, why cats are so afraid of water. This is because water is an extremely smooth surface, which is too smooth for cats, so cats certainly don't like it. In Faden's experiment, liquid cats also showed the characteristics of non-Newtonian fluids, which is called yield stress. For example, when you squeeze ketchup, either you can't squeeze it out no matter how hard you squeeze it, or you make a big fuss, and the ketchup flows out all at once. This force that breaks the limit is called yield stress. Once a non-Newtonian fluid is squeezed too hard, it will immediately change from solid to liquid. The same is true for cats. For example, when a kitten drills into the gap of the sofa or drills into the shoes, it is difficult to take it out. It's really like squeezing ketchup. No matter how hard you squeeze it, it won't come out. And once the force posture is correct, it will all flow out. The argument is not over yet because the liquid must also meet a strict requirement, that is, swallowing flow. In other words, when the deformation rate of the liquid is large enough, this chaotic movement will occur, such as a vortex, which is a kind of swallowing flow. Do cats satisfy the swallowing principle? Faden gave two examples. One is a picture of a cat spinning rapidly in a bottle, which obviously meets the swallowing principle. The other is a picture of a kitten pressing the keyboard randomly and being locked in a bottle by its owner. Obviously, the kitten stuck its head out after spinning a few times in the bottle, which meets the cladding effect, that is, the magical effect that as the swallowing speeds up, the liquid begins to climb the pole. It seems that all the evidence that cats are liquids has been found. Faden said at the end of the paper that cats are not simple passive liquids. They are active and can change their solid liquid state autonomously without external influence. In addition, some Japanese experts pointed out that we cannot regard cats as an isolated fluid system. In fact, cats can also transfer and absorb the pressure of the surrounding environment. For example, in Japan, overstressed office workers can go to cat cafes to relieve stress by petting cats. This is Faden's research. Cats are liquids. They can drill through a 7-centimeter hole, flow with a sweeping robot, and even flow out naturally from the gap in the cabinet door. They can be inserted into a pipe and drink water in this way. We even doubt whether Tom and Jerry is a cartoon or a documentary. It can be turned into a bag of cats, a bowl of cats, a tank of cats, a basin of cats, a can of cats, etc. But why can cats do this kind of liquid magic? The next research is for biologists to take the stage. The story behind this is probably like this. Biologists say that cats hide 290 bones in their small bodies, and each bone is very flexible. For example, the shoulder blade of a cat is not fixed on the clavicle, but can move. A Japanese TV station once did such an experiment. There was only an 8-centimeter wide exit in a small box. The cat went over and measured it with its whiskers to know whether it could pass. But if a dog came in, it would be obvious that the dog was stuck by its shoulder blade. There are even Japanese netizens who have done this kind of cat drilling experiment, reducing it from 20 centimeters all the way to 5 centimeters, and then trying a more difficult round hole in the air from 20 centimeters, 15 centimeters, 12 centimeters to 11 centimeters. There is no problem. In another experiment, we saw the cat moving forward in a snake-like manner. The owner successfully raised the cat to be a snake, which is really amazing. Theoretically, the widest part of a cat's body is the head, but the cat's skull is very small, which makes it very suitable for drilling holes. Then there are the ribs and sternum. 
When the cat is still a kitten, its 26 ribs and 8 sternums are also movable. Then there are the kitten cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, and lumbar vertebrae. The gaps between these bones of the cat are very large, and there are 44 to 58 bones on the entire spine of the cat, while humans only have 26. These many and loose vertebrae can allow cats to stretch their spines very long and even turn 180 degrees, or easily pose various weird head-turning shapes. In addition, why do cats like to drill boxes? If you have raised cats since childhood, you may have discovered that the younger the cat, the more it likes to drill into small and dark places such as boxes, sofa seams, shoes, etc. This is actually a living habit that cats have developed since the dinosaur era. About 66 million years ago, the meteorite wiped out flying birds and dinosaurs, changing the ecological structure of the entire Earth. As a result, a small mammal called Microdontia began to rise. Some biologists believe that Microdontia is the most primitive ancestor of today's cats and also the ancestor of the entire Carnivora order. The Carnivora order mainly includes the Caniforms, Ursidae, Trichodina, and Feliforms, that is, cats, dogs, pandas, and sea lions. They were one family more than 60 million years ago. At that time, the dinosaurs had just become extinct, and Microdontia continued to live in trees and liked to eat meat. It was only the size of a kitten, hiding in a tree hole to sleep during the day, and only dared to come out at night to catch some small animals and insects to eat. But after living like this for 20 million years, some scholars felt that it was too aggrieved. They wanted to grow bigger and fill the power vacuum left by carnivorous dinosaurs on land. So, they became more and more like dogs, which is the caniforms. The caniforms continued to grow larger, and it became the Ursidae. Ursidae can also grow larger, which is the Perissodactyla, which shed their fur and ran to the sea, and are the various sea lions, walruses, seals, and other animals that are difficult to distinguish. Of course, there are also some caniforms that become smaller, which are the mustelids such as raccoons and skunks. Those slender-toothed beasts that did not come down from the trees or came down from the trees a little later became the feliforms. The feliforms also grew larger, and this is the civet cat today. They have not come down from the trees to this day. There is also the cute, which is a species that came down from the trees. Among the cute, there is another super large guy called the hyena. So the hyena is actually a cat. Of course, the hyena is not the largest cat. Tens of thousands of years ago, there was also a giant beast that could hunt mammoths in the feliforms, the saber-toothed tiger. The saber-toothed tiger grew too big and needed more and more prey. In the end, it did not survive the last ice age and became extinct. Instead, the slightly smaller lions and tigers replaced the saber-toothed tiger and dominated the land. This is the cat family under the feliforms. And the cat family not only has large players such as lions and tigers, but also cats. Scientists once selected the most famous beast on land. You would never imagine that the first place is this small wild cat called the black-footed cat. The number of prey they catch in one night can be equivalent to the harvest of cheetahs in six months. On average, it can successfully hunt once every 50 minutes, with a hunting success rate of up to 60%, which is three times that of lions. However, the black-footed cat also has a fatal weakness, that is, its body is too small. Obviously, if it is preyed upon by a large animal, it is impossible for it to win. What to do? So the black-footed cat hides in very narrow places such as tree holes, caves, and stone crevices during the day and comes out to hunt at night. This time they have been practicing their unique skills for more than 60 million years since the era of the microdonts, which is quite amazing. This is the real reason why cats like to pack boxes. Even some big cats have retained this ancestral memory. So, when you see a cat sleeping in a very exaggerated posture, 
don't disturb it. This is its most relaxed state of vigilance, proving that it trusts the surrounding environment, including you. In the wild, cats usually sleep in this running posture, ready to escape at any time. To summarize the carnivora, starting from the Microdontosaurus, cats have been going all the way, all the agility, and it took more than 60 million years to master this liquid magic. Dogs, on the other hand, have group attack skills, bears like to have strength, and sea lions have turned themselves into fish. Why cats can liquefy? It may also be related to their mysterious brain. Originally, cats' brains are very small, accounting for only 0.9% of their body weight and have only 760 million neurons. However, this small brain consumes one-fifth of the body's blood for energy, which is very strange. Take humans, for example. Our brains account for about 2.3% of our body weight, have 86 billion neurons, and only use one-fifth of the body's energy, which is the same level as cats. Why is this? Some people say that cats' brains are constantly calculating the position of every bone and muscle in their bodies. Why do cats stand higher and are less likely to miss? This is actually the result of crazy calculations in the cat's brain. They coordinate every muscle and bone to turn themselves into a pool of beautiful liquid and then atomize in an instant, perfectly cushioning the landing. It is said that when yoga first originated in ancient India, yogis learned a lot from cats. For example, they found that humans, like cats, enter a state of relaxation with low blood pressure when sleeping. Originally, humans wanted to wake up their muscles after waking up, and stretching was an instinctive action. But ancient yogis observed that cats' stretching posture seemed to be more efficient, so they began to learn cats' postures to do yoga. This action is actually a unique skill that humans learned from cats. Cats are very good at yoga. They have long used this liquid magic to master the black technology that integrates with nature. They are elves that can communicate with nature. And humans have not domesticated cats so far, just like we have not conquered nature. It is very likely that nature and cats have domesticated humans. Our incomparable love for cats may be a natural reverence for nature. Well, today's story is shared here. Thank you, everyone.